minute, I'll get ready to give you our devices here. <laughs> Bring it on. Is it better if I take off the mask for you guys? Would you like whatever you want? Whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Well, uh, let's start with an easy question. Yeah. Um, you know, we we sort of know where. Uh, John and Mary end up. So, what what's kind of the premise for the show? What are we going to learn about the characters? What's the journey like? So, when 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 Jensen Deal first pro approached me about it, that was like my first question was like, hey, if we know the ending, like, how do we get there in a way that, as Kim Manners used to say, uh, do what the audience wants, uh, but in a way they don't expect. Uh, but then that kind of my question was also the answer um, was to figure out how can we do that. And the first thing we talked about was making sure that. We were not going to erase 15 years of Supernatural. Uh, Jensen and I are both big uh, Back to the Future fans, and we talk about like you know the fading Polaroid. They don't want Sam and Dean to suddenly be uh, fading. We're not rewriting anything. We're not redoing anything. Uh, this is a long-winded way of saying like I'm not going to tell you everything um, because um, we want to tell the story. But I will say that you know there's some hints about where we're going uh, in the first episode and then kind of throughout the first season. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna pull the curtain back completely about where we are and what we're doing, what we have been doing in episode 13. Great. And it may or may not involve that handsome gentleman over that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a follow on that though. Yes. Yeah. I would say it's a little challenging being that it's so close to uh, the original mothership and to the timeline. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, prequel series right now are like Rings of Power. Rings sure. Of Power, you can push it back way in the past. Sure, sure. Worry about that kind of actually, no. I, it was actually one of the benefits of it because, you know, one of the things we talked about early on was how do we expand the supernatural universe? And we found, you know, like my questions were the same as most everybody's questions. So I was like, hey, how? This is cool, but how's it going to work? You know, um, but because we're a show that deals in the paranormal and the supernatural, and it's a show that also pushed itself, you know, in previous seasons to do different, weird, out of the box ideas. You know, we found that we actually had more than a few ways to to, to peel this onion. So, uh, how we're actually doing that is uh, is top secret for now. I promise. Uh, we're not going to keep you, uh, everybody guessing for too long. But it was actually a huge advantage because there is so much history, and yet. There were characters like, for example, uh, the character of Millie Winchester. Millie, you only hear her name, but you know. So we got to talk about the fact that she's a mechanic, the fact that you know, um, you know, what her perspective was on Henry leaving. Did she know about the Men of Letters? Did she know about monsters? Suddenly, it actually gave us a whole new lane to kind of explore within the, in the context of the show. So it wasn't limiting at all. And I'll be honest with you, putting it in 1972, so I never have to deal with cell phones or the fact that Sam always had Wi-Fi, even though they were like in the middle of nowhere, was a pure joy. Like we actually were doing research the other day and found out like cops had pagers back then. I was like, this is like, but for them, this would be like getting your new iPhone. You'd be like, oh my God, this is amazing. And so no, it wasn't actually limiting. I mean, do we talk about different iterations of where like a prequel type story could go? Yeah, absolutely we did. Um, we, we talked about quite a, a few different iterations, but this one always felt more personal and a way to keep uh, a certain handsome gentleman, um, you know, also involved in a, in a pretty direct way. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the t sorry, you mentioned the time jump. Is yes. there like anything from the '70s, any references that you kind of, you know, took inspiration from, that you studied from? Was there anything was, that was particularly the music? The music, <laughs> without question, the music. Uh, you know, I think one of the first couple weeks, uh, Jensen, Daniel, and Renee Reef, who's their executive, um, uh, we just were kind of talking and, and figuring out. This was two years ago. Uh, two, years, two years ago, almost to the day. And um, Daniil made us a playlist of uh, just 70 songs. And they're just, I'm blanking on the documentary's name, I'm so sorry, but they're just been released, a, a, a documentary about early 70s music. That was also a huge source of inspiration. I've been writing the last four weeks to just all the music from Moon Age Daydream, that David Bowie documentary. Um, so it, a big touchstone was, was the music. Uh, music was a, was a cornerstone of, of Supernatural. Um, whether it's you know our unofficial theme song, you know Carry On, um, or it's like you know references to Metallica and ACDC and all that other stuff. Some songs we could afford, some songs we could not. Um, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, the big thing was music. The other thing, obviously, is is you know you start to get excited about. I'm I'm a child of the '70s, and you know like you start getting excited about the fashion as well. Um, there's also a lot of parallels. 2022 sadly is not that different from 1972 in some aspects, and so that was also an appeal as well to. To, to maybe couch some stories and, and give it sort of a timeless feel. As showrunner, you set the tone. Sure. Um, 
Is that super, true? You do. <laughs> do you? Yeah. And, and Supernatural is horror. Yeah, yeah. This is a love story. Yeah. Supernatural is tragic. We've seen a lot of comedy yeah. in the trailer so far. Yeah. What tone are you going for? Well, you know, Supernatural did something. There's a really great connection. I had this teacher in, um, when I was at University of Michigan who it was a it was a comedy horror class and it was a it was a class where we studied the, the uh, correlation between gross out comedies of the 80s and uh, and uh, gross out uh, horror of the 80s and what was interesting is that there was actually a lot of parallel most good you know horror scripts give you a laugh and it, it's designed to release tension and so really the tone that we wanted was was the tone that supernatural had you know, Sam and Dean are really funny. Like, they're very, very funny guys. And we did some pretty broad stuff. Um, I would say that, you know, in terms of this, you know, like, heart was a big thing for us, humor was a big thing for us, but so was horror. And so we were trying to strike the same balance that Supernatural did. Do we, do we, you know, also kind of carve out our own little space in it? Yeah, because like you pointed out, like, it is, it is a romance. So, you know, um, so yeah, I, I would say the tone is, is more of what along the lines that the, the Mothership did. The difference being Supernatural started and was really grounded as a two-hander, and then it grew from there. We start with a pretty instant family. Like we've got, you know, our, our core four, uh, as we call them, but then we've also got Demetria who plays Ada and Bianca who plays Millie. And so that group, it's just a different dynamic from Jump. And so that inherently gives you more voices. And as a result, you're going to have different types of humor, different types of drama, different types of tragedy. All the characters, especially the core four, are really kind of bound, though, in the way that all hunters are, which is some form of tragedy in their lives. And some of those we get right out of the gate, um, you know, like with Carlos's backstory uh, that you'll see in the pilot shortly. Uh, and then some of them we kind of hint at with Lapa's character as we move on uh, in the season. So, yeah. Supernatural was, was a pretty big influence on this show. <laughs> um, so my short answer is that. But, but the longer answer is because we have, you know, um, we have more voices, we have an opportunity to, to kind of stretch a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, sorry. Do you want to take it? Yeah, I just have a, speaking on, on, about voices, and, you know, there have been sort of knocks about, like, diversity um, in the past about Supernatural. Like, uh, are there, like, very, I guess, uh, proactive steps that, that have been sort of taken in, in sort of, you know, Developing a show to encourage. I'm sorry, could you say the first part again? I'm so sorry. Oh, about, about diversity in, yes. yeah, in terms of like yeah, yeah. writing and casting and all yeah. that stuff. So Look, like, uh, yeah. It's not an indictment or a criticism of the right. mothership, but no. it was developed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I, fortunately, I think we're being much more reflective and inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it was part of the design from the beginning. It was something that was very important to Jensen and Daniil as part of their uh, production company, Chaos Machine. But it's also important to me. You know, uh, my mom is Mexican. You know, uh, my wife is uh, is Latin. Uh, I know some people uh, also prefer Latinx, um, but that's what she prefers, so that's what I'm using. Um, and you know, it was very important for me to be able to see my family on screen as well. Um, and so, yeah, it was really important, and it was also just an opportunity because we were we were you know we were a little left of where where we were, you know, uh, and we were starting with with just more faces, you know, um, it was an opportunity to do that. And it, it was done deliberately. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to have you switch tapes. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that was fast. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.